I once heard a joke that the Irish government is basically a um, colonial government which no longer has a home office it can ask how to do things. And usually that is quite unfair, but with certain departments now, it seems not just fair, but fitting. This is Fada McGunning and you're watching Grip Media. Today I have with me our deputy editor, Gary Kavanagh, and he's going to talk about his article called The Great Assumption. Gary, can you tell us a bit about the article? So the article was, was really um, looking at the reasons for recent spikes in sexual crimes, at least those reported to the Gardaí. Since 2007, uh, 2011, but even beyond that, there have been a notable increases in recorded sexual offences. And for years, one of the reasons that's been given for that is that there's been a cultural change and people are more likely to come forward. And it was only recently when I was looking at the stats and I noted the, the, the dramatic increases mm -hmm. that I thought, well, I should start contacting people and going and start asking them, well, you're saying there's been these cultural changes. You know, what research do you have on that? And what I expected was that there would be surveys they'd done or studies and they'd be able to show it was true. Mm -hmm. But what I realized pretty quickly was that no one has any actual evidence that this has been correct. So there's just no internal data to back up those claims? No, no, at least there might be something held by the department or the guards that they have that they don't want to release. Mm -hmm. But when I've gone to them and I've asked them for evidence, none of them have ever been able to come back with anything. I mean, the guards refused to comment on statements that were made by the Garda commissioner, which is quite an odd position to take. Mm -hmm. Yes, the head, of our or the head of our organization said this, but no, I'm not going to tell you why he said it. And the, the Department of Justice in their correspondence with you have said that tackling domestic sexual gender-based violence is a key priority for Helen McEntee, the Minister for Justice and the government as a whole. Do you think that that position, given the lack of data to back up the claims, is that a tenable position? So. In my initial article on this, I focused on from 2011. Yeah. And the reason I focused from that day particularly, as opposed to going back to kind of 2007, where you start seeing this increase, is because Fine Gael have held the, uh, the justice portfolio consistently since then. And so in a decade, no Fine Gael minister has ever produced research looking into why these crimes have been increasing. So they're saying it's their priority, yet they've done nothing to qualify why it's happening. Well, that, that would be my position, yes. You, you're coming out and saying that this is you know, absolute zero tolerance. At the same time, a decade-long increase in sexual crimes appears to be not just ignored. These people are telling themselves that this increase is due to their own good work. Okay. So a point I make in the article is that it's absolutely possible that they're correct and that that is what's happening, that it's better data collection, it's more people coming forward. And in many ways, I would hope they're correct. Mm -hmm. But what I found, and, and the reason for the title, The Great Assumption, is that none of these people have bothered to check. And what if they're wrong? Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're wrong, we have had a decade-long spike in sexual crime that has effectively been ignored. And you would think that would be a matter of like national priority. I mean, you would think so, particularly if you're coming out and saying zero tolerance yeah. and... There's a talk about, well, we need to expand uh, some of our laws so that we can you know, take in uh, crimes against women. Whereas if they're wrong about the reason for these increases, they're not even applying the current laws. Mm -hmm. So I find the minister's position very unusual in that there is a sort of, well, we'll do new things when I think a proper zero tolerance approach would be to look at what you're doing now mm -hmm. and fix the problems there first. You say every report published since 2020 contained a note saying that it was, as a matter of fact, because of increased reporting. Is that correct? So when you look at the, the reports, they say different things at different times. This is the uh, commissioner's monthly report. So every month a new one comes out. So I went back through, I think, the last three or four years of them. So what they generally do, and the department usually do this as well, is instead of saying explicitly the cause is due to increased reporting, they will state the increase and then say, they'll talk about uh, cultural change or increased trust, and then say something along the lines of, and therefore it is not correct to say mm -hmm. that the increase necessarily represents an increase in crime. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of hedge they put on it. And I think part of that is because they know themselves they don't have the evidence. So they don't want to say 
it's definitely not an issue mm -hmm. because then if they're wrong, someone can come back. Whereas if now they're proved wrong, they can simply say, well, actually, we never said it was certainly not uh, increasing. We only strongly implied it in every single document we published on it. So they're, they're, it's an attempt to cover their tracks. I, 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 I think it is a clear attempt to create the perception that this is what's happening mm -hmm. and in a very political way where you can then later come back and say, well, no, we didn't say that. Now, what I think is interesting, when you look at some of the media reporting of it, some of the media reporting has been much stronger mm -hmm. about how the increase is definitely caused by this. I would suspect that that is not the sort of thing a journalist would say with no prompting or with no one saying it to them. Mm -hmm. And I would be very interested in what the police and the Department of Education are not saying publicly in their reports, but rather what they're saying privately to reporters who go to them for briefing information on this issue. Because I would suspect they're more sort of uh, hard line at that point. And Gary, can you talk to us about the Eurostat data? Yeah, so for a while, only a brief while, the commissioner's reports noted that um, any increase in Ireland could be because there's a general increase in Europe. So they were basically making the point that, yes, the numbers have gone up, but they've gone up all over Europe, and that might be due to uh, cultural change in Europe. But when you actually examine the Eurostat figures, it's true that in most cases, figures have gone up, but not in all cases, nor does the Eurostat uh, report that they were referencing uh, try and explain why it's gone up or break it down by country as to what they think might be happening. So the report itself isn't even uh, universal in, in regards to increases. Only certain countries have gone up. So it's, I do not think it's fair to say there has been a European-wide increase mm -hmm. when a half dozen European countries have not seen an increase. Is there any kind of other trend that you think might be contributing to that? I don't know. I mean, the initial thing I thought was population growth. So luckily enough, 2011 had a census, so I was able to directly compare the censuses. Now, obviously, you can't account for illegal immigration in that, so the numbers are always going to be a bit off. Mm -hmm. But I thought maybe the country's population has just gone up by so much that on a per capita basis, crime has actually remained roughly the same. That's not what I found. Sexual offences, or the level of sexual offences recorded, is increasing at a rate dramatically higher than the population is increasing. Um, Beyond that, as to cause, it would, it would be difficult to say because I don't think there's any work uh, looking at it from anyone I've seen. Um, and so, I mean, you could guess, but you wouldn't have anything to back yourself up, which I think is part of the problem here because by this point we should have some amount of data. I mean, the last uh, significant piece of research that was done into this area was in, I think, 2002, certainly around that period. And that was done by the Rape Crisis Centre. That wasn't even done by the state. The state are saying that they're going to have surveys on this out sometime in 2023 and then another in 2028. So the research gap here is, is absolutely massive. 20 years is quite a long time for such a serious issue. Yeah, I mean, and the CSO has been tasked with looking into this from, I think, sometime around 2019. This is not something that should take three years to, to produce. It simply should not take that long, even taking into account COVID. Um, and there has not been a lot of explanation for why there is such a, a gap here, such a wait. I mean, if we've waited 20 years and we're talking about zero tolerance, I don't know how the government can say there's zero tolerance, but also we're going to wait 20 years for a report on this because you know, we just don't think it's worth doing quicker. It's hard to believe in evidence of political will when it, you know, it seems like they're just making stuff up. I think this, this, this government has a very noted lack of political will and, and talent, to be frank. Uh, the level of talent in this doll, I think, is, is lower than any I can remember in living memory. And it seems oftentimes that things are being done but there's no comprehensive plan to actually deal with the area. So in relation to justice, we have the minister come out and say, oh, we're going to bring in hate speech laws, we're going to bring in, uh, you know, we'll, we'll change the law in relation to stalking, things like that. But it seems like they kind of just pick policy areas they think will be popular or that NGOs are particularly invested in. And then they say, oh, we're going to bring those in. But at a fundamental level, there's no actual plan to deal with justice issues. And I think you see that in department after department. They're basically magpies. 
they're picking up shiny things while the basic work of the department is left to the civil service to basically maintain. I mean, I once heard a joke that the Irish government is basically a um, colonial government which no longer has a home office it can ask how to do things. And usually that is quite unfair, but with certain departments now, it seems not just fair, but fitting. And some people have claimed that the rise in sexual assault may be due to immigration or the kind of shift in cultural dynamics in Ireland. What do you say to that? So the first thing I would say is, I've seen many people say that online, yeah. The point of this article is largely about the idea that you should not take something and assume it is correct and treat it as if it's gospel truth, because that's what appears to be happening here. And in many of the people I've seen say it's immigration, there seems to be this sort of axiomatic faith that it must be immigration. And I, I don't think that's helpful. What I would say is, if you want to look at the immigration data, and I'm not aware of anyone who's done this, you could look at it and see if you're seeing particular uh, growth levels in the 18 to 34 age demographic amongst men, which is the demographic most likely to commit crimes of this nature. That on its own could cause an increase in these stats above the rate we're seeing overall uh, immigration increase. You could also then look at uh, country of origin and see what the base uh, rate of sexual offences is in that country. And if that was higher than the Irish rate, arguably that might cause an increase in um, Ireland if people from those countries moved here. But even if you were to do all of that research, you would have no proof that that was the cause. It would just be um, you know, a, a somewhat supported supposition. The issue I think that will happen here is the sort of research you'd have to do to prove that is quite advanced. It would be heavily academic kind of research. This is such a politicized area and so many people are afraid of saying the wrong thing lest they be kind of grouped with people, you know, just assuming it's immigration. Mm -hmm that I'm not sure that one would expect an, an academic perusal of it to actually be fair and accurate. And that is deeply unfortunate, because if there are issues there, we should have them and we should have a mature debate about them. Alternatively, you could run the research and find actually it's not this at all, it's something else. And the fact that we cannot do that is, 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 kind of, is not good for the country, uh, would be my, my stance on it. More than giving you a definitive this is what's causing it or not.